Hey there folks, in this video I'm going to ask the question, can I make the music I want to hear using just this box? This is an Akai MPC Live 2. Is it just a beat maker? Does it limit me in any particular way? I say no. I actually think this is as capable as any piece of software you're likely to use on your computer. Like, you know, the very big look at them, one look at them. I've been making music for about 15 years and it's always been at a computer in an office chair at a desk using a single finger, you know, very outcome oriented, using my eyes almost more than my ears a lot of the time. Here, I'm using both of my hands. I'm super focused on what I'm making with my ears. And this is so much fun to use. I really miss the tactile sort of hands-on experiences of my childhood. I'm sure you do as well, you know, sitting on a beanbag playing a PlayStation game. In my case, I was playing Music 2000 to make music with, and there I was with a controller. And then I was in my bedroom with a dual deck tape recorder, dubbing one thing to another so that I could effectively multi-track and make music that way. I don't expect I'll ever stop using computer software to make music, but I must admit, I'm getting a bit tired of feeling like I'm making an appointment with my creativity. You know, when you sit down at a desk, in an office chair, at a computer, I'm going to be creative now. And there's Twitter and there's spreadsheets and there's Facebook and there's your email. When I came into this, I thought, oh God, this is going to be really slow. It's going to be tedious. I'm going to hate this experience. And it's not the case at all. 
when I'm working with this, I feel like I'm on my knees in the garden, in the soil, you know, working with my hands and getting this flower to come up out of the ground. This is just, it's tactile and it's earthy and it's fun. Apart from the touchscreen, this is really satisfying to me. I love beating and manipulating this thing to, to, to hear the music that I want to hear. practical really is this thing? I mean, for starters, you've got a f roughly about a four hour battery in here. So you can be sitting in front of Netflix or waiting for somebody in your car while you're sound designing or making music. And what looks like a wrist rest on the bottom there is actually a set of pretty bloody good stereo speakers. So you don't need a power cable plugged in. You don't even need a headphone cable plugged in. If you look at all the bloody ports on the back here, you know, the SD card slot, the inputs, outputs, the MIDIs, the USB ports, you know, the, the hard drive bay in the bottom, it's very apparent this thing isn't trying to confine you. This thing is like a freeway. It's not a cul-de-sac. It's not an Apple computer. This wants you to rock the way you want to rock. It wants you to go, child, and do and be. The MPC workflow is definitely slower than your typical software on your computer. I'm not going to lie to you. That'll take a bit of getting used to. That's not to say, however, that this limits you in any way. The only real setback with this is that you are limited to this little screen here. So you're only ever working in a single window at a time. So there is a little bit of dipping and diving into menus and windows, which again, that takes a bit of acclimatizing. The most obvious thing here is you've got a grid of 16 pads. Each of those pads has four layers of samples that you can load up and mix individually. But hang on, you've also got eight banks. So that's eight banks times 16 pads with four sound layers. That's pretty cool. When you work with an MPC, you have a sequence and then inside your sequence you have audio and MIDI tracks which then send notes and automation to programs. So a program is like an instrument or a collection of samples. A program can be a whole bunch of things. It can be like a grid of samples, so that's good for drums. It can be one of the included plugins here. You've got a polysynth, you've got a bass synth, you've got an electric keys synth. They're all amazingly tweakable on here too. It's crazy. Here, I can edit each sample on each pad just by hitting the pad and then using the knobs here to change the in point, the out point, the loop point. 
You've got LFOs per pad, you've got modulation, you've got high pass and low pass filters per pad, and you can apply up to four effects per pad. You can also apply effects to a track or to a program. <laughs> so this thing wants you to work the way you want to work. You're not limited here very much at all. I can edit one pad at a time, or I can edit multiple pads that I select at a time, or if I've got like, let's say, eight banks of 16 pads, I just press all, and now I can make changes to all of the pads at once. If you're trying to get a lot of little samples to work together, you know, you want to change the pitch of this one, the pitch of that one. This is the fastest way of doing that. Look at the like diff, diff, like, you know, diff, very big, look at them one. If I hit shift mix, or if I just double click the mix button, I go to the sampler. So I can sample directly from the phono input from like a turntable or something. I've got a little threshold adjustment here as well. So it'll only start sampling when it receives a signal above a certain level. I can actually apply effects to the incoming audio. Again, up to four effects as it's recorded. Kind of weird. I'm not really sure when I would want to do that. Maybe compression and limiting on the fly. And then once you've recorded your sample, what do you want to do? Well, you want to assign it to a pad. Really easy to do. You can also click Sample Edit. And here you can do some pretty serious, in-depth, robust sample editing here. Fade ins, fade outs, normalizing, gaining different sections, cutting different sections, changing the speed or the pitch of different sections. And you can edit the sample parameters independently from the way the program plays that sample on that pad, if that makes sense. Like you do with most NPCs, you've got a 16 level button here. So you can say, okay, do I want to play this sample across different notes or across different velocities? Or do I want to change the filter? If I double click this button, we have a grid. This is a piano roll. I'm not a big fan of using this with a touch screen but it does more or less everything you need a piano roll to do. You've actually got a lot of really decent effects in here as well. Compressors, limiters, reverbs, delays, chorus effects. And that takes me to mixing and mastering. You absolutely can mix and master your whole track on here. You can adjust the pan, the level, and the effects send return for each pad, or for each program, or for each track. And then once you've mixed and mastered, you can now export the stems, the audio layers of your track, if you want to take it to a computer and do some further work on it.
I do have to mention stuff that I'm not a big fan of. The first thing is the firmness of these pads. Like, wow, you know, if you've ever used a Native Instruments machiner, those pads are great. These pads are freaking hard. Like, they seem more sensitive at the corners. And then as you move further into the center, it sort of rolls off. They almost don't trigger at all. Sometimes they double trigger. So I don't know what the hell is going on underneath these things. Another thing I'd say is you really want more knobs on here. You want more buttons. I still have to use the touchscreen quite often, especially with the grid, the piano roll. That's not fun. Going from like actual buttons to mashing your finger into an inanimate plate glass window sucks. I would say that organizing your project is not the funnest thing to do with this device. You know, you've got sequences one, two, three, four, five. You've got tracks one, two, three, four, five. You don't know what those are. Having to rename stuff as you go with this touchscreen, ah oh man, that's not fun, let me tell you. My advice to you, and this doesn't just apply to people using hardware boxes, this is for people using software as well. Make template projects. Make template instruments or programs, drum groups and stuff with everything named and structured and routed and kind of pre-mixed. You know, you want to minimize the amount of time between powering up your software or your hardware and getting creative. <music> Do I think this is worth your money? Is this not just an iPad with a controller wrapped around it? Because, you know, you can get Beatmaker for your iPad for like $30, and that's that's a hell of an app. That's like FL Studio on your iPad. It's That's amazing, if you don't mind making music doing that. But no, this is not an iPad with a controller. This is, a, this is an MPC, yeah? This is a very integrated and hands-on an intuitive, well thought out system. You absolutely can make a whole track on here, but I'd say you're more likely to get like 50% or 75% of the way there and then export your stems. Um, organizing and laying something out on a canvas with a mouse and keyboard, that's just, that's hard to beat. And there you go, folks. Thanks very much for watching. It's always fantastic to hang out with you. And um, I love uh, just talking about stuff that I love talking about. I hope it gets you a bit inspired. I hope it gets you guys making something, talking about things. Um, I hope some energy is shared with all of this nonsense. So yeah, thanks for ch uh, tuning in and I'll see you guys in the next video, whatever that may be.